And uh, he asked me to stay on with him, but I felt like it was my, had, was my duty uh, to go back uh, to family life and various uh, commitments I had made. So mm. uh, I, uh, even though I wanted to stay, I went back, uh, which is very important. It was the first time in my life I felt like I had really um, not followed my soul's uh, calling. So, so fa just family life at that time means? Uh, I was married to uh, a beautiful uh, woman, uh, Sarah. Uh, and we've been married for 20 years, and uh, 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 almost all those years were really, you know, fabulous. Uh, and you were in California at this point? I was point? in California, in Del Mar, and uh, uh, we had a daughter together, uh, Shazara, who's now 23, and, you know, she's the apple of my eye. I adore mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and so I had two boys from a previous marriage. They're uh, call them my godsons rather than my stepsons. Yeah. I was very close with them as well. Mm. And, uh, but I came back and uh, I went in for what was supposed to be minor surgery at the beginning of 1999 and I came out of that with a, a severe uh, chronic pain syndrome. Oh, no. Yeah, and I'd never been a wuss about pain in my life. Oh, you know, no. I'd had football injuries, basketball, Achilles heel, etc. Uh, but this was, uh, it felt like hot coals on my forehead, you know, my third eye, and... Uh, That's where it was, you were experiencing Right there, it? yeah, right, right here. Oh, man. And it was just constant, you know, night and day, and it really wore me down. And I went to all of my holistic health uh, friends, I got, you know, you name the treatment, I got it. Finally, after six months, uh, I was recommended to me to go see a chronic pain specialist, and... Uh, uh, he prescribed for me uh, uh, pain medication, and uh, uh, it gave me some relief for the first time. Uh, uh, allowed me to function, uh, but looking back, uh, mm. I progressively uh, became addicted uh, to these pain pills. And before that, you you were pretty much on the holistic track. You Completely. so for you to t take a drug was. Unusual, very uncharacteristic. Unusual, very uncharacteristic. Okay, so you started uh, with this. Okay. Yeah, so I started with that, and uh, uh, you know, I kept thinking, okay, it's going to allow me to function. You know, so I was able to, you know, give lectures that I had agreed to, and uh, get a book finished. I don't know how I did it, but somehow. And uh, but uh, I needed more and more of the pain medication over mm. time, and it started to really. Uh, uh, caused distorted thinking and poor judgment. <clears throat> and uh, I started throwing rave parties. Uh, uh, my marriage fell apart. Uh. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, as a you know, newly single uh, person, uh, again, poor judgment. You know, here I am in the middle of Del Mar throwing rave parties. And, uh, and now you're around your mid fifties, maybe yeah. somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. Rave parties exactly. in Del Mar. In Del Mar, oh and, boy. Uh, you know, with the first such thing, you know, one police officer showed up, and you know, and then a the second time, I did the same thing. The definition of insanity in the twelve step is uh, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Right. <laughs> yeah. Finally, the third time, <clears throat> ten police officers came pouring into my home carted me off uh, to jail, and uh, that was really good because I remember my emotion uh, when they came through the door, and uh, it was relief. Uh, it was relief uh, uh, because I knew I was so out of control, and, uh, 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 and uh, you know, so it was relief, uh, and, and mm -hmm. when I went before a judge, uh, that was valuable because uh, my internal controls were really uh, uh, off, uh, off the mark and having an external judge. Uh, and so I wound up in jail for a week while, because my uh, former wife wouldn't bail me out. Ah. And it was the best seminar I ever took. And I've done them all, you know, from S to uh, Life Springs to, I mean, you name it, I've done it. Uh, that was the best seminar. It was an expensive seminar yeah. because my, you know, my family life disintegrated, my uh, personal, my professional life, they all just suddenly, 
you know, there I am, uh, you know, in the newspapers and because uh, you're high profile, so this is mm -hmm. all showing up in the newspapers. You live, you live by the uh, media, you die by the media, so to speak. Oh my! But it was also the beginning. Mm -hmm. It was really the beginning of in jail. I, you know, suddenly had to go off all of these meds, mm -hmm. uh, and it was you know horrible. I went through uh, all kinds of. Uh, uh, you know, rapid uh, 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 detox, oh but uh, I also had the most amazing uh, spiritual awakening uh, of my life. And uh, uh, I always say in seminars that I give that we all wind up on our knees before God. Mm. It's either through humility mm. or humiliation. Yeah. And if your ego is mm. holding on tight, mm. as mine was, I had mm. started to you know, believe my own press clippings, uh, mm. kind of thing, uh, then it's through humiliation. Mm. But no matter, as long as you wind up on your knees mm. before God, mm. uh, and uh, mm. uh, that happened to me uh, in jail, you know, mm. first sobbing, you know, and then uh, uh, having the direct experience that God loved me exactly as I was in all my uh, sinful uh, state mm -hmm. and uh, sin meaning off the mark uh, and God loved me uh, too much to leave me uh, mm -hmm. as I was and so it was the beginning mm -hmm. of a uh, you know I had uh, all kinds of things to you know take care of uh, uh, and uh, but fortunately, uh, you know, uh, all of that uh, judicial stuff got straightened out pretty rapidly. And, uh, uh, you know, today I, I feel uh, at peace uh, with first and foremost myself and before my God and also with my family. Mm -hmm. And I love being here on Maui. Uh, oh, man. It's just, Absolutely. you know, the greatest blessing in having, you know, special friends like you, you know, Absolutely. who I adore. Yeah. And, uh, Feelings very mutual. Yeah. yeah. So you're saying, I yeah. mean, it's obvious that the reason that anyone takes Est or Life Spring or whatever ultimately really is to get to that point. Of, yeah. Yeah. And so for you and for me, taking all of those didn't really bring me there either. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it allowed me to understand those various workshops that the mind is a machine. Mm hmm. Uh, and we all tend to identify with our machine, yeah. uh, our beliefs uh, especially, and, uh, uh, and we start taking ourselves too seriously. Uh, and that, of course, who we really are is uh, pure spirit, uh, yeah. that we're eternal and unbounded and part of this incredible first and foremost web of life and then this web of energy yeah. that uh, I got mm. to re-experience uh, once again in its most uh, raw and unbounded state. Mm. And so, I, you know, it, it's uh, sad on one level that I had to uh, create such a, uh, a, a downfall, but my ego needed that downfall. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, great adventurers, I'm an adventurer on the Enneagram, also have great misadventures. Yeah. I think Bill Clinton can attest to that. As well. <laughs> so right there in, the, in that jail, during that time that you were in that jail, this, that process all unfolded. Absolutely. Uh, uh, for me, uh, here I am, a, you know, a nice uh, Jewish boy from New York who became a doctor and ran off with a Hindu, uh, Marsha Mahesh Yogi. Yeah. I had an experience with Jesus Christ, uh, which blew me away right there. In jail? In jail. Huh. And it was an absolute, as real an experience, or more real than sitting here with you right now. And, uh, is there anything more to say about that? <clears throat> well, some of that is, you know, deeply personal. It wasn't out of the corner of my eye. It was for a good, in terms of earth time, a good, oh, more than an hour. Huh. Uh, and um, where, uh, you know, the main thing to share is yes. that... Uh, for the first time in my life, I experienced the personal love of God. Hmm. Before that, and I felt very at home with that, I felt the impersonal, you know, the universal, mm. unbounded energy field. Mm. And for the first time, I got that that pure creative intelligence cares about each and every one of uh, his, her creatures. Mm. 
including myself. And uh, that love, that direct experience love, was the first time that I felt such unconditional acceptance. And it wasn't just for me and all that I had done, you know, all the you know, list of uh, accolades, but it was for, uh, you know, my pure spirit. Yeah. And it's interesting, I had to, from jail, uh, uh, my mom found out about it. You know, I thought, okay, let all this happen, but don't let my mom. Oh, you know, my, my, God. my mom was in her 90s. She was, uh. And she gets a call from one of her 90 year old friends in Miami saying, Friedel, turn on the television. Your son, the doctor, he's in jail. <laughs> Can you imagine? What a Shanda. And I thought, yeah, exactly. And I thought, you know, when I talked to my mom uh, that she's going to say, how could you do this? You brought shame on our family. I'm going to kill myself or, you know, I'm turning my back on you or whatever. So here I have to call, you know, my mom collect, you know, you don't have a credit card in jail. And so, you know, there's a, a machine that goes on saying, will you accept a, uh, you know, a collect call from the uh, Vista County uh, Correctional Facility? Uh, and, uh, but my mom takes it and she was great. I mean, I felt uh, my mom unconditionally loved me. Oh, man. You know, not just for all the things that she was proud of and so forth. And mm. it was profoundly healing for me, mm. you know? Profound I needed that. Well, with the combination of Jesus and your mom. Exactly. Was, you, you can't lose with that combination. Whoa. A Jewish rabbi and my mother. Oh, know? my God. So, so having had that experience with Jesus, I mean, how can I put this? You, it doesn't necessarily mean that... Uh, how did you translate that in your in your system? Well, I always, and how do you? Translate I always it? say when people ask me about what's my religion and so forth, I say I'm a Jewish, Christian, Hindu, Buddhist, Daha. even Muslim, mm. spiritual being. Mm. So first and foremost, Jewish. Uh, very proud of uh, my Jewish roots. You know, All right. that, that love of knowledge and really, I mean, each of us, of course, is Yisrael, you know, the chosen people to, mm -hmm. you know, uh, God chooses each of us to uh, be a sacred reflection mm -hmm. and to uh, be a light out to the nations. Mm -hmm. And uh, and lastly, we're all spiritual beings. It doesn't matter yeah. what our what club we joined. Absolutely. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, Maui's a beautiful reflection of that, you know, where I get to share on very equal terms with people who went with this guru or that religious faith and yep. where we all come to recognize in humility that it's not just the signposts or the path, it's the pathless. Yeah, yeah. And uh, <clears throat> so I, I, I really have great reverence for all the great spiritual masters. As do uh, I. As yeah. do I. And that yeah. includes, uh, you know, the great uh, rabbis. It includes another great rabbi, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, of course, uh, uh, the great Hindu masters who uh, brought me uh, into meditation. Yep. So here you are. You've been on Maui about two years? Almost two years now. Almost two years. Yeah. And how do you enjoy your time here? Oh, God, I feel so fortunate. Uh, my publisher wants me to write a book, uh, which I'm working on, Making Peace with Your Life. And, oh. uh, uh, you know, for those of us that have, you know, gone beyond midlife and uh, uh, perhaps we haven't fulfilled all of our dreams or perhaps uh, we, you know, had some dark night of the soul or uh, perhaps, uh, you know, there's still some... Uh, you know, unresolved grief or uh, a sadness that seemingly doesn't end or uh, a cynicism about l your love life that uh, kind mm -hmm. of keeps you guarded and uh, mm -hmm. protective. Uh, and uh, uh, so, uh, you know, we have to make peace with these things in order to mm -hmm. move into the second half of life, which is the soul's return. Mm -hmm. It's the great return. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, if the first half of life is accumulating, <clears> the <throat> second half of life is that letting go and releasing. Yeah. 
So that's where and you're Maui, at. And Maui, for me, is uh, the perfect reflection of both an inner and outer paradise. Uh, where I can leave the island and go teach uh, seminars that I'm still asked to do, different parts of the world, India, next year in Costa Rica, in Europe, I have something coming up. And uh, uh, as well as, uh, you know, the inner paradise, uh, practicing, uh, you know, my spiritual uh, program here on Maui. Yeah, absolutely. And being with kindred souls, being uh, with kindred souls. Yeah. 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 This is it. This is this is life on Maui. Life on Maui. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being uh -huh. on the show today, Hari. It's my joy. I appreciate yeah. you and love you. I You're love right. you too. Mm -hmm. ah. What a wonderful man. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So that's it for this episode of Life on Maui. Our next episode will be with Dr. Aurora Juliana Ariel. She's developed a new cutting edge therapy for dealing with problems on a subconscious level. I'm gonna partake of this and actually be a part of a living experiment on the show, so stay tuned for that. That's the next show. So until then, have a great time and aloha. Woo! All right. <laughs>